Okay, so I often get emails from students who are working on art projects where they have to write up a profile on a specific artist. I have two requests. One is from Sasha in Australia and the other is from Bailey. Not sure where Bailey's from, but I'm just gonna jump right into these questions. <laughs> Sasha asks, do you have any critical reviews or articles written about you and your artwork? Uh, there are two. I have an article written in Southwest Magazine, Southwest Art Magazine. Um, it's kind of a review of a recent show at Studio Gallery. I'll put that down below. And then also there's an article on stayfamous.com, I think. It's an online magazine. Really nice article. It was written about a year ago. I didn't even, I didn't discover it until just about a month ago. So I'll link that one down below. Uh, number two, what inspires you the most? I think I am most inspired by light. Really look for a light and shadow and try to create a convincing feeling of light in my paintings. And then if I'm painting something like a cityscape, uh, say it's at dusk, you know, having a convincing feeling of light in the sky, street lights, headlights, that sort of thing. Just a convincing feeling of light. That's the thing that inspires me the most. So most inspired by light. How do you choose the locations that you paint? I mostly look for locations that have a lot of compositional opportunities. So there are certain natural places that are really beautiful that just somehow seem limited on compositions. Some sort of remoteness too. I like to paint at places that aren't super crowded. Uh, unless I'm painting in the city, then I'm, you know, I just kind of accept that I'm going to be, you know, in a crowded, busy area. But, um, most of the time what I'm looking for is just a strong composition. So that's how I choose my locations. Um, and then what other artists inspire you? I'd say I'm mostly inspired when I go to museums and look at like uh, paintings that uh, like say early California paintings or uh, I was recently in Paris and going to the Dorsay and looking at the Impressionist paintings. I think I'm most inspired when I see other artists in real life uh, when I see the work in real life and I can stand in front of it and and see the brushwork and that sort of thing also on Instagram a lot of times I'll just scroll through my explore page and I can find uh, some really inspirational work uh, on Instagram uh, what relationship does your work have to your life experiences my paintings are a reflection of a life experience which is standing on location and carefully looking at a scene and trying to paint it. When you're trying to reproduce a scene or when you're trying to paint it, I think you're gonna look more closely than you would uh, under normal circumstances. And then that painting becomes, uh, is the result of that experience of observation. So I feel like that's the link between, uh, the relationship between my work and life experience is the painting is a direct reflection of a life experience, which is painting the painting. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, are there any symbols in your paintings that contribute to the meaning? I would not, I don't think, I'm not sort of a symbolic painter really. So um, no, I wouldn't say there's not, there's not any symbols really. Again, I think that what I choose and how I paint it is a very personal thing. I think if you put, you know, uh, several painters in the same location, they're gonna come up with a completely different painting and a different composition maybe. Um, so yeah, there's not really any specific symbols or anything in my paintings um, that I can think of. Okay, so moving on to Bailey. Uh, Bailey says, my issue lies with my lack of ability to let loose with the paint. I'm always overworking them and therefore ruining them. Uh, I think this is a common thing, especially when you first start painting. It's, uh, uh, for some reason, there does seem to be this, uh, you seem to be tentative and cautious. I certainly was. And I even, I remember at one point I put like, <laughs> I like wrote on my plein air easel, my French box easel, I like wrote all these notes to myself, like, and the biggest one was like, loosen up, like let go, you know? And, and uh, it was surprising how hard it was to do that. I think that I was able to let loose just by painting a lot and then not really worrying about any one specific painting. I just kind of told myself at a certain point, okay, this doesn't count. This is just play. I'm just gonna play here, use a big brush, be super loose, and then, like I've said in previous videos, come back with a small brush and just tighten it up just enough 
to make it work. And you've got to walk back from your work about 10 or 15 feet and really think like, do I need to do any more to this? Um, I think the mind has the ability to take the most abstract image and then turn it into something. So you, you can really get away with just suggesting and then that allows the viewer to fill in the blanks. So you got to trust in that. Could be a good thing to do several paintings where you just really exaggerate the looseness and then just live with them for a while. Um, I've done that on occasion and uh, I think that that changes your perception of what loose really is. Anyway, it's just a matter of painting a lot and not making any one specific painting too precious. Be sure to play. Be sure to give yourself that, in, that assignment to loosen up and just push yourself and experiment. Anyway, uh, that is it for this. I'm going to go mow my lawn and then I'm going to do some touch-ups on some smaller work and maybe I'll film that, include it uh, in the next video. So thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.